In this video, we'll cover how to install a fresh OS X or Mac OS operating system on an empty drive. This is very useful for when you're upgrading or you have had a crashed hard drive and you're starting from scratch. So there are three ways to do this. The first way is cloning. If you have any drive with OSX on it, we can clone it onto the new drive. The second way to do this is through a USB or a DVD media. If you have an original installation disc or a USB, otherwise we'll have to make one. And then the third way is internet recovery using Apple's internet recovery option. For this will require a high speed Wi-Fi internet connection. Cloning to an empty drive. If you have access to another Mac, the cool thing about Macs is that they use UEFI, uh, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. That means you can take an older Mac OS X hard drive, pop it into almost any Mac with a SATA to USB cable or SSD adapter, and it will boot, with some exceptions, of course. Then you can clone the drive completely using software like Carbon Copy Cloner, which has a free version. This is a re reliable way to get a new drive up and running. Let's run through these steps quickly, and then we can look at other options. Get access to any Mac you know the password to. Take an old hard drive, use the proper adapter to hook it up. In our case, we have a 320 gigabyte old mechanical drive with a SATA to USB cable. While logged into the Mac, Go to appledollars.com slash downloads and get Carbon Copy Cloner CCC4 or 5. Move it to the Applications folder and select Trial. Choose the Mac's internal hard drive as the source drive and our USB adapted drive as the destination and clone it. You will have to go through some hoops to give CCC the proper security permissions. The cloning process can be anywhere from 10 minutes through USB 3 to a few hours, depending on how much information you have. When done, shut down the Mac and plug in the clone drive into your Mac that has an empty hard drive. In our case, we are plugging it back into our same MacBook for demonstration purposes. As soon as you press the power button, press and hold the option key. When you get to the drive selection screen, all USB drives are labeled in orange. Select the drive that is hooked up by the adapter. Once you boot into the drive, open Car Carbon Copy Cloner. It should be in the Applications folder. Run it and select the source drive as the drive that we just booted from and the destination as the new empty drive we installed. Once it's done running, shut down the system, unplug the USB drive, and boot up the Mac as you would regularly. After the first restart, perform an NVRAM reset, and we're all done with this method. <clears throat> now for our USB or DVD option. If you have original installation disk or USB, pop it in, press and hold the option during boot up, uh, and select the media manually or the Mac will find the bootable device using UEFI automatically when powered on. If you don't have a bootable USB or a DVD, watch vid the video in the description on how to make a bootable OS X drive. Keep in mind that many newer Macs are configured with planned obsolescence and will not boot older OS X operating systems. Create the appropriate OS X or Mac OS USB for your Mac model. You can look up your model's Mac operating system level at everymac.com. It's a great resource. They have specifications for every Mac model. So let's run through this option step by step. Once you make a bootable uh, installation USB, uh, here is what you, you will need to do. Boot into the installation GUI. Select 
the disk utility, we will need to partition and format the new drive so that it's ready for the installation. In Mac OS, format it to APFS, and in OS X, format it to Mac OS Extended Journal. Once partitioned and formatted, we can select, install OS X or Mac OS, we'll load the installation image onto the drive and reboot, and everything is on autopilot from there. Big side note here, this copy of the installation application can be verified. You have to open the terminal and change the system date to the year of the operating system installation image. The command format for changing date and time is as follows. Date, month, time, year. And would look like this for January 15th, 6 p.m. 2019. In the terminal, type in uh, date space 01151800019. The breakdown is 01 is the month number, 15 is the day number, uh, 1800 is the military time for 6 p.m., and 19 is the last two digits of the year. It's a mouthful, but manually switching the years will allow the installation to continue. If one year doesn't work, try a lower or a higher year. For our last option, using Apple's internet recovery. The Mac will download the Mac OS from Apple servers based on the startup key combination that you choose. Pressing the command and R key at the same time installs the latest Mac OS that was installed on your Mac. Pressing the option command and R key upgrades to the latest Mac OS that is compatible with your Mac. Shift, Option, Command, and R. Install the Mac OS that came with your Mac or the closest version still available. Note, if Mac OS Sierra 10.12.4 or later was never installed in your Mac, Shift, Option, Command, and R isn't available. In general, using command and R is the recommended way because it will not associate your Apple ID with your Mac. Once booted, you will be asked for the Wi-Fi password. Once the Mac downloads the OS you chose, this can take up to an hour depending on your internet speed, and you get to the installation GUI, select Disk Utility and make sure that the drive is properly partitioned and formatted to APFS. Then install the fresh OS and follow the prompt screens. This concludes our three methods for installing onto a blank hard drive. If this was very helpful, please hit like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.